Okay, it's recording, Elena. Thank you. Good evening, all. So the purpose of today's meeting is to get to, to help you get started with Watson Analytics. That's a software that you're going to be using for the remaining assignment in this course. So uh, here is a brief agenda for today. We're gonna, I'm gonna do the brief introduction, and I'm gonna discuss the course. I'm gonna give you a brief uh, introduction to the course that you need to take. And uh, we're going to talk about accepting the Watson Analytics invitation. And I'm going to do the walkthrough. And I'm going to point out some useful resources. And we're going to do some question and answers. All right. So what is Watson Analytics? It helps business understand their data. And it answers the human language questions. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a few. And it allows analyzing the huge files of data. And it's very user-friendly and intuitive. So Basically, in other words, tonight I'm going to need a volunteer to count how many lines of code I will have written during this evening. All right. So now let's go on. And here, in basically, is a brief history. And you're going to have a copy of the slides. And if you're interested, you may watch the history of Watson and Analytics. It all started way back in 2011, when smart computer called Watson won the Jeopardy game. All right. Now, here is the link to some customer success stories that you may read at your leisure. Uh, there we go. So here is Watson Analytics 101 course. This is a course you need, need to start to get started. Uh, what you need to do is you need to go to this web page here, and you need to create a free account and big data. You create a free Big Data University account, and uh, you're going to enroll in this 101 course, Watson Analytics 101. And I included a tile here to show you how it looks like. So the course is going to be safe paced and you can watch each video and as many times as you need. And trust me, some of the videos you may need to watch it more than once. And at the end of the course, you've got a test. You have one hour to complete the test, and you get one attempt on true and false questions, two attempts for multiple choice. When you complete the course, what you need to do is you need to download your completion certificate, all right? And you're going to need to upload it in a, in a classroom. So you need to download your completion certificate upon completion of the course. Now, yesterday, what I did was I used your email address from your Leo profile, and I created your Watson Analytics account. And what you need to do is you need to look through your email. This is how your email is going to look like. And what you need to do is you need to open up the email. There is a button. I accept an invitation. You click on it, and you follow the rest of the screens. Uh, in case, just in case, if clicking the button does not work, there's a link at the bottom of the email that you can just go ahead, copy, paste in your browser. And uh, you'll be redirected to the form that looks like this. Uh, if the email is not pre-populated, then you're going to enter the email address where you received the invitation. It's an email address where you received the invitation. And it's going to be called your IBM ID. You're going to create your password and write it down somewhere. Uh, and you're going to be creating your, you're going to be entering your first and last name. And also, you want to create a security question, something that you can easily remember. For instance, what's your mother's maiden name? It's an example, right? Uh, now, here is a web page where you go for subsequent logins. So keep in mind, you only need to accept an invitation once. And here is where you click, right, to get to the login page. This is the subsequent login. So what I recommend is that you can add the bookmark to your browser. In your browser, bookmark this page. So you're going to click on Sign In, and you'll be redirected to this screen that looks like this. Uh, your IBM ID, remember, your IBM ID is an email address where you receive the invitation. And uh, I used the email in Leo the first attempt. And if that didn't work, then I may have contacted you. 
All right. Uh, here is your password. That's the same password that you made up. And you're going to click on sign in. All right. So here are some resources. And you're going to have a copy of this slide, right? So it's a lots of analytic community. You have a nice uh, discussion forum. So if you have a question, there is a chance that somebody else may have asked this question already. And you can browse through the answers. You can post your own questions. Now, here we go. I'm going to start sharing my screen. And what you see in here is a screenshot of the Watson Analytics landing page. So when you log in for the first time, this is what you're going to see, right? You're going to have data tile active, and you're going to have one sample data set already on your dashboard, right? This is a freebie. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to start sharing. Share my screen. There we go. All right. So here it is. This is a Watson Analytics landing page that I was talking about. And you're not going to see other users because you, um, you're not administrators, right? So you're going to see a personal folder. That's a folder where your work is stored. Shared folder is an area where you would share the work with your classmates. So if you notice in here, if you expand the shared area, you're going to see as a folder for your session, right? You're going to see a folder for your session. And when the time comes, when the time comes, I'm going to create the subfolders. On your last group assignment, it's going to be group work. And I'm going to create the subfolders within here. And each group is going to get access to the corresponding subfolder. Uh, what I did was, uh, what else I did? Watson Analytics comes with sample data set, which I'm going to show in a few. But in addition to that, I created this folder. I call it more sample data set. You should have access to it. Everybody should have access to this. Right? And what I did was I uploaded some sample CSV files. And uh, if you notice that here, CSV means the file was imported from CSV. And Excel means that the file was imported from Excel. and uh, let me close this out, not yet. And uh, let me go back. This is a landing page, I'm back, right? So basically, this little shortcut, this little icon tells you the source. And in this case, the file, I imported it from the database. But you don't need to worry about databases in this class. We're going to be loading data from the desktop files. And we're going to be loading data from uh, from from the existing files from sample data. I'm going to show you how to do that. So here it is. This is my personal area. And I have three tiles here. Data, discover, display. And I'm going to go over each shortly. Now here, this list the data set that I already have imported. Right? Those are the files that I already have. Now, I have two options here. Right now, I'm in the tile layout. I can also click here, and I'm going to be in the list layout. Right? So instead of seeing a tile for each data set that I have, I'm going to see a list. So here is the format. Here is the data quality. And I'm going to explain what it is. is uh, what's in analytics? They look at the data in my data set. And it's going to look at each column. It's going to check if the column has missing values or if the column has any data that it has, you have unusually large or unusually small values. And based on that, for each column, it's going to compute the data quality score. And what you see here is an average, right? So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to, quick, I'm going to show you how to upload data. And you have several options to upload data. So to do that, you're going to have to click on the new data. And you want to make sure that you have data tile active, right? You're on a data tile, you're on a personal area, and you're going to click on new data. Now, look at this. You have several options here. Uh, sample data. When I select this, note this. I have 10 data sets on here that I might choose from, any 10. And if I like it, if I like something like, for instance, employee performance, I can select it, and I'm going to click Import. 
This is how I add a copy of a simple data set to my dashboard, right? I just select it here. I mean, to my personal area, rather, right? So what, what it's doing in here is telling me that it's processing. It is still processing, or I can also switch here. Now, very important, uh, you want to make sure, you want to make sure, first of all, you want to make sure that you have a good internet connection, right? And another thing you want to make sure is that uh, you want to minimize the number of processes running in the background in your PC. Especially Windows 10, check to make sure you, ha you don't have that many processes running in the background because it affects the cloud performance, right? So now here it is. It finished uploading and uh, it shows you the data quality score, right? And it shows me the date. It means that I uploaded it today. Uh, now what I can do is I can go ahead and start asking questions about my data. But before I do that, let me go back here. Let me go back. And I'm going to show you the menu. So here it is. The tile is employee performance. All right. Here is the ellipsis. When I click on the ellipsis here, it's going to open up the menu. And here I need to tell you something really important. The first option is delete. Very important. Keep in mind, there is no recycle bin. There is no recycle bin. If I select delete, it's going to be gone forever, right? There is no way to recover unless I want to re-import again. But if I did some work on this, I would have lost it. So very important, right? Here is a rename, right? So what I can do is I can change name, right? Rename. That's one option. Another option that I have is move. So if I have a bunch of subfolders, I can move it to another folder. Like, for example, here's my personal area, right? And I like to be organized. I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to call it assignment 2. Now, remember, what did I do to create a folder? I clicked the new folder, right? I type the folder name, and I hit create. Now, my folder is going to show here. See, this is a tree structure. Personal, assignment 2, right? This is assignment 2. The folder content is currently empty, right? So to preview what's in my folder, I have to click here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here, personal, and I'm going to go back, and uh, I'm going to click here on ellipses here, and I'm going to select move, and here it's giving me an option. I'm going to move it to my folder. I'm going to move it to my subfolder. I called assignment 2. Right? So I'm going to go ahead, move. There we go. So now to see that, I have to go to assignment 2. Right? Now I'm going to show you more options here. Click here. Uh, refine. Basically, when I refine, I'm going to open the data that was uploaded. Right? I'm going to open. I'm going to see how my data looks like. So I'm expecting to see the column names in the first row and expect to see the data in the remaining rows, right? I click Refine. Right, exactly. So the original spreadsheet that may have been uploaded to the data sets, right? It had the column names right here, and this is the data, right? So it's very important, very important to keep in mind that the column names in your data are descriptive. And it's going to make sense when I'm going to show you the discoveries, right? Make sure that these column names are descriptive. Now I'm going to go over what you see in here. Uh, for each column, you may change the properties, right? And to do this, for example, see this here is attrition. I can click on a column name. When I click on a column name, it's going to open the column properties. I can click here, and I can click on properties, and here I can click on change name, right? And I can just type over this. I can change my name, 
right? And I can name it perhaps employee. I'm going to rename it as employee attrition. And that's it. I'm going to I'm going to close this out to save. Right? Here it is. Now what I need to do is I need to save it. But I don't want to modify the original copy. So what I have to do is I'm going to go here, see this, and I'm going to save us. Save us. And in here, I want to save it in my personal folder. And I still want to save it into assignment 2. And I'm going to save it as modified. Right? I'm going to create a copy. Because I don't want to overwrite my copy. Right? I don't, I don't want to. In other words, I don't want to override the initial copy. Because if I make a mistake, I can easily go back to initial copy. Save. Now, another benefit of being able to create a separate copy is that suppose that my company has several business units and I want to hide my columns, show hide columns depending on the business unit where my employee works at. So what I could do is I could create a copy of this spreadsheet, right, of this data, and I can show hide columns in that copy and I can save it and I can share it with people who need to see this information, right? So this is another advantage of saving multiple copies of this, right? So one advantage is easy backup and another advantage is that I can share my copy with different people. Now, what you can also do is you can hide the column. For example, suppose that I don't care about let's pick something that I don't care about uh, perhaps I don't want to I don't care about somebody's age right I could hide somebody's age so I'm gonna click in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here and there is an option it might not be here but okay I'll show you where it is it's not in here I'm gonna show you where that is what I have to do is you have to click here. See this? Here is a list of your columns, right? And if the column is checked, it means the column is visible. But to hide this, I would have to click here for age. I'm going to search here for age. Here it is. And I'm going to have to uncheck it. When I uncheck it, it's going to be hidden. Now, if I want to close my search here, I would have to click on this, right? To close the menu, click here. Now, here, these two buttons are going to be your best friends. Why? I deleted the... I, I hided the H column, right? It's hidden. Uh-oh. Is it really something that I wanted to do? No. Well, I can always go back here, and I can always search for an H, and I can always check... It here to unhide the column, right? But what if I don't really remember what change I made, right? I don't really remember how I did it or what I did. Here it is. I can undo. There we go. My column is back, right? So that's something to keep in mind that you have an undo button. Now, uh oh, no, that I did really what I wanted to do. Redo and undo, right? Okay, now we let's go ahead and save it. It's always a good idea to keep saving it, right? There we go. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create hierarchies. So in this case, I have an age. Age is a number, right? Uh, of course, depending on what you do, age is a sensitive information. And if you look at most of the surveys, we usually don't disclose the age. We usually talk about the age range, right? So let me click here. And uh, that's rather the, what do you call it, the groups, right? So I'm going to click here. And it's not a hierarchy, but that group. That's called data group. I'm going to create a data group. And what this would do is it would add a new column, right? And I'm going to say, I'm going to call it as age ranges. Uh-oh, wait a minute, this is not what I want, right? 
this is not what I want. I want it to look as a con continuous number. So let me close it for a second. And let me show you what we need to do in here. We need to click on H. And we're going to click on Properties right here. Right? Keep in mind because you're going to see it. Currently, it was showing me H as discrete values. That's not what I want. I need to check this slider. Right? Because I want to treat my H as continuous values. I don't want it to treat as a discrete values. Right? I have to change it to the slider. Right? Notice this? So now it's treated as continuous values. And now I'm going to be able to do what, what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you how to discretize the numeric variable. So some books or some readings may refer to it as binion. And he may call it discretization. It all refers to the same concept. Now take a look what I'm doing. I'm going to click here. And I'm going to click on data groups, right? This is what I wanted to do. Uh, and I'm going to say age range, right? I'm going to say it age range. By default, by default, it's going to do five. And it's going to do the equal width, right? So I have an approximately the same equal width right here, regardless of how many people I have in each age range. That's what it did. And I can, uh, if I want to, I could go ahead and change it, right? I could change the number of ranges. But I'm going to leave it as is for now. And I'm going to click on Done. And what it will do is it's going to add a new column all the way at the end. And it's going to call it the age range. If you see it, yeah, I'm going to scroll it down. You have to scroll it all the way. See this? This is what I, I just did. I just added a new column, and I call it an age range. Now, what I also could do is I could factor my, I, I, I mean, I could filter my data rather, right? Uh, for example, suppose that I want to see only people who travel a certain distance, right? Here, I can use my slider. And here, uh, here when this value is between 10 and 40, this is basically what I did. The slider controls the value range that you select. See this? Uh, suppose that I don't want to see the values in the selected range. I would have to do the invert rate. Uh, here, another option I have is, is to include blanks. So suppose that if I had missing values, I could exclude them right here, right? If I have a data row with missing values, I would need to uncheck this right here to exclude that data row. Okay? That's another option I have. So let me not select anything. And I want you to show you something here. On the other hand, job row, this is a discrete, right? Here it is. With discrete values, right now, I don't have anything checked. It means that my data will show all. Uh, I have an option to check only what I want to see, right? So right now, it shows that I only selected manager. And I can go through here, and I can uh, keep on selecting what I want, right? And deselecting what I don't want, right? So now, if I close out, see this? My data gets immediately filtered. And what I could do is I could undo at any time. I can undo. Uh, now, see this? It keeps undoing one step at a time. Right? So now what I'll do is I'm going to save this. Always want to save this. And uh, see this? It indicated that it's saving right now. And uh, I'm going to show you something. Notice this errors right under the column name, and you use it to sort. If you want to sort the data by a column, right, you would, you would have to click on these errors. There is a top error and bottom error. It allows you sorting, ascending, or sending, or descending. Uh, what, what, see this, this is what I was talking about, right? Here. Uh, now, here, if you click on this, it's gonna show it's gonna show you the data quality scores that I mentioned earlier. And it's looking at the data distribution and it's looking at the percentages of missing values. 
uh, here, well, it's showing me that here this one is a high quality, right? And why do you think this column is a low quality? It's because looks like all my values are Y. I just have a single value. I don't have anything, any variety in here, right? So what I could do is it might be a good idea to exclude these columns from analysis, right? I want to exclude standard hours and I want to exclude over 18. So I can go back here and I can search here standard hours and to exclude this I would just need to do this and I wanted to exclude it over 30 over 18 I'm sorry over 18 okay so what I'll do is I'll just exclude this that's it I'm gonna close out and you see this immediately it gets updated now what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this save right uh when I'm done, what I could do is I, I to go back to my menu, to go back to the landing page. Uh, when it stops saving, I'm going to need to click right here in the upper upper left, right? Right here. This is how you go back to the landing page. Now, here it shows you what, what you have open, right? In this case, I have this page open, Employee Performance. Uh, I can close this, right? To close it, this is what I do. And well, for some reason, it's taking me back to account settings page. So I would have to click here to get to the landing page. If you have two pages open, it's gonna take you to another page that is open when you close. Uh, now I'm here, right? So here it's showing me that I just saved the copy. I just saved the copy in here. Now let me. See, what I could do is I could type my question about the data. And if I type question over here, uh, Watson Analytics is going to try to answer my question. It's going to look at all my data sets that I have to attempt to answer this question. So let me say something like performance. And I'm going to click enter. Let's see what it does. Uh-huh. It shown me the starting point. See? Looks like I did not ask a good question because see this if it's grayed out so let me try something else I can try well I, what I could do is I can try something like I can try pretension and see if it does yes now it worked see this what it did for me is that it showed me the suggested start, starting point for instance uh what drives employee attrition and here is a what is a predictive model for employee attrition see this the color code here shows the relevancy now how did watson analytics program find what i'm interested in and i'm going to show you so now let's go ahead and let's pick this what drives employee attrition i'm going to click on this here and what it's going to do is it's going to build a spiral model for me. And the spiral model is going to have a bunch of pins. And each pin represents a combination of predictors. So now, something to keep in mind. Attrition, right, or anything that I select in here. Oops, that's a good choice for the dependent variable. I should select something that is categorical in this case. But anyhow... Here, here it is. Each pin represents a combination of um, predictors, right? So the variables that we are predicting, the variables that we are predicting is called the dependent variable. Other variables, you can call them predictors or you can call them independent variables, right? Uh, now here, this is where my dependent variable is. And it also, it's also displayed inside the, the core, and it's also displayed here. What I could do to change the dependent variable, right? Suppose that I'm not happy with this. I can click here, and I can drop down. I can select what I need from the drop down, right? Here, this is how you do it. And uh, I can just uh, 
Let's try to select the satisfaction. Let's try this. Right? I'm just giving you I'm just giving you an example of how to what you can do with this. Oops. I think I hear the app for some reason. Now it's better, right? Uh it's gonna take some time to load and uh what you could do is you could click on view more just to give more to see more information on the drivers, on the predictors. Uh oh, no key drivers were found. So I have to I have to pick a really good predictor. Right, I can try job satisfaction. Let's try this job satisfaction. So right now it's trying to find what predicts if if I'm satisfied with the job, so to speak. Uh, it's loading. While it's loading, let's take a look at this. Here I my suggested discoveries. So Watson Analytics is trying to say what else I might be interested in based on the discoveries that I have selected. Right. Uh, for some reason, it did not find it for me. Well, I should have wait. I should have stayed with an original predictor. Let's just. Well, I should have. I should have stayed with an original predictor, but that's all right. Uh, let's just take attrition. <laughs> there we go. Now it's gonna see this. It's building the set of drivers for me, right? Uh, so now the way you read this is. You can click here to see more information, right? The way you read it is that uh, over time, and the job level is predictive strength is 83%, 84%, right? Those are one of the top predictors. Now I clicked on the plus sign, and it's going to show me more information. I clicked on the plus sign. This is what I did. See this? I clicked on the plus sign, and what it did was it opened up the new tab for me, and it's going to show me the visualization here. It's going to show me the bar chart, I think. Yes. And it's going to be the attrition count, and it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to show me that it's, it's still loading. All right. Basically, essentially, what this did, what I did was I created something called Discovery Workbook. And the workbook now has two tabs. Uh, what I need to do is I need to save it. So let me save it. I click here and I'm going to do Save As. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Attrition Discovery, right? I'm going to call it Attrition Discovery. And I'm going to put it in my assignment to folder. I just want to stay organized. I want everything related to assignment to to be stored in assignment to folder. And I'm gonna hit save. Now it's saving here. Something important to keep in mind. I have two tabs, right? Sometimes if I do the work to today, tomorrow I need to come back to it and continue working. And I might not remember what I did. So to help myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my task the meaningful names. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to enter a name, and I'm going to say, let's say, attrition drivers, right? So that way I'm going to know what I did here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and save it again, right? You want to make sure that you keep saving, right? Here it's still loading for some reason, but let me show you while it's doing it. See, here is the list of additional explorations that you might be interested in. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I can also click on new tab, the brand new tab, and I can do a totally new visualization. Uh, here, one thing to keep in mind is that here, we have the specific data set open, right? We are working with a single data set. So when I I selected a single data set, when I enter my question, it's going to apply only to the data set that I selected. I'm not going to be asking questions all over all data sets that I have. It's going to apply only to the data set that I just selected. Uh, here is a list of suggested starting points, but I'm not sure if I want to do that. So I can click here, 
and it's going to give me help on how to ask my questions. Right? There are different types of questions. Variety pack. That one is looking at the value of and the breakdown and the top and so on. Like I could say, what is the top age, for instance? Right? I'm just making it up. I can drop it here and I can do some comparison. How do the values of age compare? Well, rows is not meaningful. I want to see what is the count of. Well, again, I'm not getting something meaningful. <laughs> I'm going to need to click on show next to see more. Right? Or what I can also do is I can do aggregation. And this one is just going to display the summaries, right? Like, for example, I can do the average salary or something like that, right? Let's see. Let's do the average salary and let's see what it does. Average salary search. And this, oh, because I had to, I had to exit this. I see what I had to do. I had to exit this, the help thing. Okay. So let me see this. Let's try salary. Okay, here it is, and here it is, right? Let's see salary. I'm going to add another exploration in here, and what this is going to do is, it's going to do, all right, average salary. Now, something important. Here I selected the average, right? How, how did I know that to select this average? Okay, because if I look here at my variable, if I looked at my variable, uh, there is a property where I can control what aggregation to select. I think it's this one right here, right? If I look at it here, and if I click here, look, and if I go to properties, see this? Aggregation average. That means that whenever I want to display the aggregation data, it's going to do an average. What if I'm interested instead, what if I want to see the lowest salary? I'm going to have to change it here, minimum. Now, very important. If I change it here, the change will apply only to this worksheet or this workbook. This change is not going to apply to, the, the, to other workbooks that I have created. Uh, if I want this change to apply to every single workbook that I'm going to create, right, from this data set, I would have to change this property at the data set level. I would have to refine my data set and change the properties there, right? Let me click. See this? This is a data tray. This is somewhat similar to what you saw in the refinement, right, when you did the data refinement. I can click here, see this? This interface right here is similar to the refinement. However, keep in mind that the changes that I make here will apply only, it will apply only to this specific discovery. It will not apply to all discoveries that will use the same data. It will not apply to the data. Let me multi minimize this. Uh, Something very important that I want to show you and here pay attention. There is a concept called multiplier, right? Multiplier. Uh, let me pick here a categorical variable. And I'm going to pick job role. Suppose that I'm interested to see the minimum salary hike by the job role. This is what I do. I select this and I drop it into multiplier. Now what it will do is it's going to show me the minimum per... It's supposed to show the minimum per job role. Well, for some reason it's still 11. For some reason it's 11. Well, I could always go back and change it to an average, right? Well, for some reason, but anyway, you got the idea, right? Here, what I did was I just displayed the minimum per human, per uh, job role, right? You can show the minimum per job role. 
uh, I forgot to point out what is this in blue. Do you remember what is this in blue? Take a look. This is essentially the column name, right? I have a column with the same name in here. And earlier there was a column with the same name in a spreadsheet that was loaded, right? The simple data that we're using, somebody before had to upload the data, right? So what let me do is, let me save this for right now, right? So you've got this piece here. Uh, what else I can show you is that the decision tree, right? So let me open another tab right here. And here it is, job, job satisfaction. And here it's going to do the predictive model or decision tree for my job satisfaction. And remember, job satisfaction is one of the variables, right? It was one of the columns in a spreadsheet that was loaded at some point. So here it is, and it's going to show me the tree. Uh, you can see the rules, or you can see the actual tree. And the way to read this is uh, here, the first rule. Oops, the first rule says that if years, see this, if years with manager is less than one, training, training time is this falls in this range, right? Basically, the rule gives me the conditions here, and given these conditions, uh, this is the predicted values, right? And here is the number of rows that this applies right so basically i get here is my condition and here is an average predicted value and here it tells me the number of data rows to which this condition applies that's what basically it is right and i can sort by predicted value in here right so here i'm get the sorting option uh here it basically showing me the rules right and i would have to scroll down to read the rules uh, what I could also do is I would have to adjust my zoom, I guess. Yes, <laughs> adjusting my zoom helps a little bit. I can see more information in the room. Uh, here is a decision tree. There we go. It's going to show me a nice picture of the decision tree. <laughs> and I can click on the tree to zoom in. Right? I can click on this to zoom in. Jesus, when I hover, it's giving me an information about the node. Uh, average satisfaction 2.73 and it's giving me the standard deviation and here it's telling me that it applies to everybody right number of records it applies to everybody now I'm starting to branch out and here right it selected the splitting variable and I would need to zoom in to see what the variable is right I would need to adjust my zoom or click in here. I would have to click to figure out how to see this bigger. Right? Now I'm going to put my mouse here. And it's showing me that 84% of cases fall into this branch. Right? And I have to keep going. So basically we'll need to figure out how to look at this tree. Yes, there is a way to look at this tree closer in details. Oh, what you, you could do... Let me minimize the zoom. There is an option right here. See this? There is an option right here. Say share. And you can download the image. You can download this image of the tree. See this? I hit on do share, download. And I can download this as an image. Image. And it's going to give me that option. It's going to prompt me for the file name. And so on. I'm not going to do this. Let me close this out. Oops. <laughs> Well, once in a while, you're going to see what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> okay. So basically, that's what it is, right? I can download all my predictors, but let me close this out. That's not what I want to do. But the options that I just saw was I could select what exactly I wanted to download, and it would have been downloaded as a zip file. And this would have been one of these <laughs> images, right? Uh <laughs> What I could do here, I could keep on clicking, right? And I can keep on, yeah. So basically, here you've got your tree. 
and uh, you've got your decision rules. You can toggle between decision rules and decision tree, right? And here it shows you the color code. The darker the color code, the stronger is the job satisfaction. I should be able to click on this node and, uh, yeah, I should be able to do that. Anyway, now here you click on visualization. If you click on visualization, you got additional options. You can uh, play around, well, rather you have to click on the format. You get additional options where you can choose the some formatting, like, such as color codes, and you can choose if you want to center the text or if you want to let indent the text and so on. So once in a while, you may experience what I'm experiencing right now that has to do with the browser, right? If you see this, your option is to use a different browser. I mean, to be quite honest, I would recommend I would I would recommend using the Google Chrome, right? So now what let me do is let me log in again and there is more than one way to do it. For some reason sometimes it's caching the web page. Okay. So here it is. This is a web page that you're gonna see when you log in. And let me log in in this browser. Right? And I'm gonna and, and I'm gonna need to log in. So, so this is my IBM ID, right? Your IBM ID is going to be your email where you got your invitation. And I'm going to log in now. And now, I wanted to show you something. What I did was, uh, not intentionally, but coincidentally, I had something open, right? When I log out, when not log out, but I still have that session, right? But even if I log out, I open something. When I go here... See this? I have something open, right? This is very important. It especially becomes important when you work in a group, when you start sharing files. It does not matter. Even if I log out right now, if I have this file open, I still have it open. So my group member cannot use this file. That if, even if the file is in shared folder, even if my group mate has a required permission, he or she will not be able to open the file if I still have it open. Even if I'm not logged in in the system. See this? I started in a new session in a new browser. And I still have this file open. Right? So that's something to keep in mind here. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you. So here is my personal area, right? Here is the assignment within the personal area. Here is a discovery that I created, attrition discovery. Uh, now, I have not created any displays tonight yet. Well, I have in general, but not tonight, right? Let's go to the display. And I'm still in my assignment 2 folder. That's something to keep in mind what folder you are in, right? Uh, suppose that I start to panic. Oh, my God, I created, I created the work before. Where is the display that I created two weeks ago for another demo? Oh, it might be in another folder. It's in here, right? So that's another display that I may have created earlier for another demo. Okay, so now let's go back here. I want to stay organized. I want to save it here in this assignment 2 folder. To create a new display, I have several options. I can click on new display or I can click here, new display. Right? And... You have an option. Let's let's check the dashboard, and I'm just going to select uh, demo dashboard. I'm going I'm just going to call it demo dashboard, and I'm going to hit create. Something nice about it is that the dashboard can be organized into multiple tabs, and each tab you can specify layout, and the layout does not need to be the same for each tab, so let me go here. Uh, what I could do from here is that I could add the brand new visualization, like I did, completely new visualization. I can add widgets, which means uh, I can add text, I can add links, I can add shapes, and all of that. Uh, what else I could do is I could add the discoveries that I already created. To do that, I'm going to click here, 
And I'm going to have to click on personal, right? Uh, personal. And here is a list of my discoveries that I have created. Right? This is personal area. And this is in a in a assignment to tab, right? So let me go back. Let me go back. I have to click personal. Oops. I don't want to go to other users. That's not good. Personal. You're not going to see other users. You're not going to see other users because you're not administrators. Right? So now let's do this. Let's do... Let's select something like... Um, I can I can I can select anything. I can select Boston Housing Discovery, for example, and I can do this property tax by Charles River. Watch, I drag and drop. But you want to make sure that these arrows light up because I want to align my visualization to this square size, right? I want to align. I don't want to worry about resizing. So I drag and drop, and it's supposed to add. There we go. It takes some time to load. But it added my visualization over here. The visualization that I created earlier is going to add here. Right? Now I want to add something else. I want to see the property tax drivers. I'm not going to add them right here. Right? So since I selected the two by two layout, I can have four visualizations in here. One in each rectangle, right? And I can just go ahead and select the average property tax. There we go. Now, what I wanted, what else? Suppose that I'm done, right? I'm done with three. I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna show you something very important. Pay attention. I can filter all tabs. I can filter data in all tabs. I can filter data in the current tab, right? See this? Multiple tabs. Or I can filter individual visualization. I'm going to show you the differences. But before that, let me add another tab. And here I can choose the layout, right? I just want to select a single one. And I want to go back to my discoveries and I'm also going to select my uh, I'm going to select my Boston housing I would have to scroll down oh here it is see this now here I forgot to mention that Boston housing is a discovery and what you see here these four are the tabs inside the discovery do you remember each discovery ha con contains the tabs and each tab is going to be listed right here. So let me see. I'm just going to select anything. Let's pick decision tree. I just want to illustrate something here. There we go. Now, now look at this. It's much easier to read, right? It's much easier to read it here. Uh, let me close this out. And always, always you want to save it. So let me save this. Uh, and uh, cancel. You want to save. The difference is that if I save it, it's going to save under the same name as is. Right? Save. Okay. I'm done. I saved it right now. Uh, here, what you could do is you could name this. Right? You could name this. Because sometimes if you need to return to this work tomorrow, you want to make sure that you remember what you did. So you would need to click on the pencil and rename it. But let me show you something. Very important, the filters. I have two tabs in here. I can apply a filter to both tabs. I can apply my filter to a single tab, or I can apply it to the single visualization, right? So I click. Now, if I don't like the filters that I added, here is a clear filters. But that's not what I want to do right now. I want to add the filter, right? See this? You click on the funnel here. And this will open up the field. It's going to open up the field in your data, right? In this data set. And this is a Boston housing data. And in this case, what I can do is I can drag and drop 
If I want to filter all tabs, I'll drag and drop it into here, into this area. Now, what I need to do is I click on the ellipses, and I can uh, edit filter values. And here, I can just do, I can use the slider to select the values. Right? Done. Done. Let me unclick this. Okay, here we go. Now, now very important, this filter that I applied is also applied in this tab, right? It's also applied in these two tabs. Uh, on the other hand, let me do this again. I'm going to click here. And I'm going to use another field, rooms, right? I'm going to use rooms. And I'm going to drag this here. I'm going to drag this here, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to edit, and, well, I'm just going to do this. I'm just making it up. That's it. Now, I'm done. What you, you need to keep in mind here is that this filter does not apply to this tab right here. It only applies to this tab. Uh, what else I could do is to apply the Closes. To apply the filter to each individual visualization, I would need to click here, and then you click over here on this arrow. It opens up the visualization, and I would have to do it right here. See this? This is a data tray that I can use where I can click and apply the filter right here. See? If I do this, this filter will be applied only to this visualization. It will not apply to anything else in this workbook, right? And you remember it multiply, right? So I can see the breakdown of property value by child's river broken by another variable if I want to, right? I can select my other variable and do this, right? I'm not going to do it right now, but... Just in general, I'm showing what what can be done, and I can play around with my colors. But even if I if I do change color here, right? If I do change the variables that control the color, the change is only applied to this visualization. So let me close this, right? Uh, now here, what you could also do is you can create another tab as a copy. So I click here, see this copy, right? Suppose that I want to have another variant of this visualization and I want to make some modifications to it. So see this copy. So that creates a copy of this stuff right here. And then I can apply filters only to this copy, right? This is a visualization, it's a dashboard. I can apply my filters only to this copy, right? Sometimes it's a good idea to make a copy if you're still working on something, right? Uh, now, what you need to do is you need to keep on saving. Uh, something important that I want to point out is that there are two modes. The dashboard has a view mode and edit mode. So whenever you open the dashboard file, and if you see the pencil mark, right? And if you're trying to click on something and edit, and it does not work, uh oh, what's happening? What's happening? I think I know the answer. It's because your dashboard is not in the edit mode. You need to click on this pencil to return to the edit mode, right? And to revert to the view mode, you would click on the eyeglasses. So remember this, right? So now I went over how to create the dashboard. Uh, let me go back to the landing page for right now. And what I forgot to show you is that it is possible to load data from the files, right? It's possible to load data from your local files. Uh, to do this, you would need to go back to the data. And uh, now remember, my assignment to is active. If I want to go back to my personal folder, personal area, I would have to click here, right? The subfolders are not listed in here, in this area. The subfolders are listed in the left panel. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to click on New Data. New Data. And I'm going to need to click on the local file. 
What I could do is I could just drag and drop, right? Or I can click on Browse, and I can find the folder where I have my uh, files. So basically what I did is I have a folder on my external hard drive, which I call the data set, and I store a lot of my uh, CSV files in the same folder that I use. Right. So, for instance, if I want to import the telescope data, I just select it, I click open, and I'm just going to say import, right? That's all. So, for this class, for the purpose of this class, just worry about the importing the data from local files, reusing the data set that already has been uh, imported in the sample data, as I showed you, or you could also use some of the data, additional data that I uploaded, right? To do this, you would need to click here, right? You would need to click here, and on the options, you're going to need to select Refine, Refine, and here you're renaming it, right? You're going to be asked to rename it, and I'm going to name it as Copy, and you would have to save this you would have to save it in your personal area. Oops. See, this is a problem, and I'm going to delete it. The problem is because I am an, I, I did it as an admin, right? I did it as an admin. You're not, you won't be able to do what I just did because you don't have an admin, right? You won't be able to do what I just did. You will be able to just open it, okay? So let me try this. Be fine. Okay, let me close this. You would need to, the bottom line is you would need to open it and you would need to save it as a copy, right? You would need to save it as a copy. Let me close this and uh, let me go back. Let me go back to where I was and uh, see this, I would have to... Now, what happens when I delete something? It goes to the recycle bin. Uh-oh, see this, when I delete something, it's going to give me this warning. I'm deleting it because that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, for you, you would need to just open it. Refine. There we go. This is what you need to do. Is You don't rename it. You just click on it and you do refine. You do refine, right? It's going to open the file. Then what you need to do is you click here and you go save us. Right? It's taking some time to load, but once it loads you're going to have an option to save us. See this? Save as. Right? You're going to do save us. And what you need to do is you're going to go to your personal area and you're going to save. Right? So you need to open this and you have only read-only access. You're not going to be able to do what I did a few minutes ago. Right? You have a read-only. So you would need to save a copy of this to your personal area. And this data set is on Connecticut house sales data. It's on Connecticut house sales. So basically, you're looking at the drivers of the house values if you decide to use this data. Uh, now what I'll do is I'm going to exit this. Right? I'm just showing you the ideas and what you could do. And it took me to this workbook because I never closed it. Right? Uh, here, it shows you what you have open. So let me go back to the landing page, page quickly. Uh, now, something very important to keep in mind, and I'm going to remind you throughout when it's time to the group project. You're going to be, the files that you share with the classmates are going to be uploaded into your session folder, right, and into the subfolders that I'm going to create for your group. Nobody in the system should be uploading files right here. If I see it, so we're going to make this rule. If I see anything uploaded right here, instead of your personal area, or instead of your group folder, is it going to go where? It's going to be deleted, yes. And once something is deleted, there is no way to recover it. So something to keep in mind, you want to make sure that the folders are saved in the correct location. The reason is this, everything right here is visible to everybody in the system. You don't want all 160 users in the system to know what project you are working on, right? 
this is not a university project. This is your group project, right? So you want to make sure that the files are saved in the correct location, right? And when we get when we get closer to the group project, when we have the teams assigned, I'm gonna be working on creating folders, and I'm gonna give you the instructions on how to share files with your classmates. A few important things that I wanted to point out here is this this question mark, and this is available on almost every single screen. Uh, in addition to undo button, this is another friend. Look, I click here. And see how much information is in here. I can click and select the documentation. And I have very nice and up-to-date information. Right? Notice that it has been updated recently, and they've been doing an excellent job is keeping it up-to-date. So I can browse my topics, like for instance, the data. I want to read more on how to add the CSV data, and I, read, I want to read more on the files that I may add. Etc. And I have a nice videos and I have nice instructions on many topics that I want to read about. And here's a nice link here to the community. It's going to open a new tab. And in the community itself, see how, my, how many resources I've got. I have the use cases. I've got different videos. And I have a lot of interested links. And see, they even put a link to the Watson Analytics course that all of you will be taking hopefully this week, right? So you want to get started as soon as you can because uh, time really flies. Unbelievable. Uh, now, let me go back here. So you want to look at the, the help pages. It's very important, right? And uh, you want to make sure that you get familiar with an interface, get comfortable with uploading data, uh, and so on, creating discoveries. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Remember this. You may ask a question about your data from the data page, or you can do it from discover page. If you do this, it's going to run a question on all data sets that you're able to access. On the other hand, if I select a specific data set, oops, not the discovery, not the discovery, I meant specific data set, data right here, right? Then the questions that I ask will apply only to this discovery. It will apply only to this discovery that I have selected. All right, let me close this, and let me close this. Very important, and you might be reminded about it later on. When you start working in a group, you would have to remember to close you would have to remember to close all your work before you're logging in to make sure that your group mates can use it, right? Uh, another, right, another thing to keep in mind is that the file, if I, want, if I want to move something to another location, and if the file is still open, I cannot do it. I need to close the file before I attempt to move it. It's either to my subfolder or if I want to share it with my teammates, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't really matter. But before I move the file, I have to make sure that uh, the file is closed. Now, I have been talking about a variety of things here. So now I need to check if we have what questions we may have. So go ahead and post your questions in the chat. And I'm going to... Stop sharing my screen. I'm going to go back to the slides for a second. And uh, I'm going to go back to my to the slides. And uh, I'm going to point out a few important things in the slides while people are asking their questions. So here, you're going to get a copy of the slides. I'm just summarizing how to load data from the local files. And you want to make sure that the file is a comma delimited. And you want to make sure that the file, the, the column headings are in the first row and they're descriptive. You want to make sure that the data does not have any totals or subtotals, right? Because everything on the first row is going to be read as a column heading. Everything on the remaining rows will be read as data, right? Uh, here are more instructions on, on how to upload data from local files, and you have some useful links. And I would strongly recommend 
to look at as many resources as you can find time for. I realize it's a lot of materials, but you want to look at as many as you have time for. So here are the differences between layouts. You can toggle. So sometimes when you have a lot of uh, data uploaded to your area, sometimes you can look at the list view. Well, it depends on your preferences. Uh, now here, this is basically the summary on how to refine data, right? Uh, here is basically shows you how to change properties and we went over it. And uh, this is showing you creating the data groups. And you can also create the data group for categorical variables, right? You can uh, combine the values, the categorical values into groups as well. So now let me go back. So here are some resources on refinement. There are different use cases and videos that you may want to read. And here it's showing you how to, it's showing you some examples of the questions, right? And in fact, you can even add your own visualization, so, right? So basically here, just showing you an interface where you can click on, it shows you the different question types that you might ask. Uh, this is just an example. Prediction, we looked at that, right? Uh, and we looked at the decision trees. And we looked at the decision tree view. Oh, you would need to click on a view. You would have to click on a decision tree to get a better view, right? I was, and it was not cooperating for me this evening, but in general, it should do it. Uh, now, let's, if you click on a specific node, it's just going to tell you the number of observations that fall into that node. And it's going to give me, in this case, it shows the average property tags because that uh, data set that I used to create the slides. Uh, here, this is more. I would strongly recommend you to watch this video. Right here is a link. And it's, it's, it's showing you how to interpret the decision tree models. So this is a very good video. I would strongly recommend it. Uh, and here, just basically showing you that you can uh, download your discoveries, including the picture of the decision tree. Uh, now, this is just showing you the different options for the display that I went over briefly. Right? Well, here is the difference between the, the freeform layout versus the fixed layout. This is what I did, right? Uh, I selected the layout option, right? I selected one of the options. I did not select the preform. Uh, now, here I'm just showing you that you can add the discoveries to the display, right? So let me go back. So here I'm showing you how to use the toolbar. It's just a good summary for you. And it's showing you the different filters that you may use. Uh, the widgets that you may add, you may embellish your dashboard with widgets. You may change the color codes. You may add text. Well, it's something to consider if you're preparing the presentation for your assignment. Uh, and uh, this is just basically showing you the landing page for the displays has the same view options and the sorting options. You can select how you want to sort your assets. I call it an asset, but some people call it files. Well, okay, let's go. Here are very good resources, additional resources that you may find useful, right? And you're gonna get you're gonna get the copy of the slide. So here it's showing you how to create folders, and I went through this except I created the folder assignment 2 instead of assignment 1. Uh, and here, it's showing you how to move the file. Uh, did I show you? I think I did show you that, right? Uh, when you move the file to the shared folder, you're going to see additional properties. The additional property is going to say who wants to be able to, who you want to allow to see your file, right? And when the time comes from the group file, group folders, I'm going to configure it that only you and your group members will be able to access 
the folder for your group. I'm going to take care of the configuration. So everything that you place in a folder for your group is going to inherit the permissions of the folder. So I'm going to help you with that. Once I have all of the group assignments, then I'll do. Now, uh, this is a brief summary of group work. And we need to keep in mind that also this system allows, we have multiple users, we need to keep in mind that only one user can edit the same file at the same time. So make sure that you close your file before you log out. Because even if you logged out, you still, if you have your file open, you're still using the file. So this is very important. And I'm sure that it might be, this information might need to be repeated. Uh, here are some links to the use cases, and it's also, I believe it's also in the classroom. Uh, you can watch this, and you can see some examples of how to use an application to, and how to gain insights from the data, right? Uh, now let's click here. There are more use cases. So basically, I just wanted to point out some helpful videos that could help you get started. Uh, now is an excellent time for you guys to ask questions. And uh, in case you may or may not have had me, may not have worked with me before, I like questions. I really love when students ask questions. So let's see if anybody has any questions. Please type them in the chat room. Nobody has questions? Then I'm going to ask a question. Do you remember in the beginning I asked somebody to volunteer to count how many lines I will have written tonight? So anybody wants to type the answer in the chat room? Has anyone been paying attention? How many lines of code have I written tonight? So what is an advantage of Watson Analytics application? Do we need to know how to write code? Not really, right? So that's one advantage. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Some, some, excellent. Somebody was paying attention. Excellent. So we don't need to know how to write code. So this is one. Well, it, it's good and bad, right? The negative side is that you are unable to customize the application. The positive side is that you don't need to know the code. Uh, I forgot to mention something really important. Uh, the Watson Analytics team keeps on adding enhancements to the application. However, in order to uh, do the maintenance, do the system maintenance, and to add additional functionalities, once in a while the application needs to be down. And I'm going to give you more details on Watson Analytics maintenance schedule. I'm going to have a link. But once in a while, the system is down for maintenance. So I would recommend that you schedule your times accordingly so that you're not accessing the system during the maintenance window. It's not going to be good. I promise. It's not going to be a good learning experience when you attempt to access the system during the maintenance win window. Uh, there may or may not be maintenance page, depending on the nature of maintenance, but... You may want to schedule your times accordingly. Yeah, I see somebody raised your hand. So may I ask you to please type the question in the chat? Yeah, please ask your questions. And, and also, I have been monitoring it, and I see that some of you still need to accept your Watson Analytics invitation. So after this demo, please do it. I would... I would recommend you do it as soon as possible because all of us get a lot of emails and it's very easy to lose it. Okay. For Big Data University, are we allowed to take the test? Oh, that's an excellent question. That's an excellent question. Uh, yes, you get one attempt to take a test. But guess what the passing score is? The passing score is 60%. You can use anything you like while you're taking a test. You have two attempts for non true and false question. But to take a test again, the only way I can think of is creating another Big Data University account. But in general, let's be optimistic. Why do you think you're going to fail? You won't fail. 
I mean, let's be optimistic, right? And in addition to the test, each chapter has some the end of chapter questions. Those questions are timeless. So basically, if you're watching the videos, you will have an understanding of how to use an application. So I think you should be able to pass it. Well, but basically, if the question is multiple choice, uh, sometimes you need to select one answer. Sometimes there is more than one. It tells you. So if you fail the test, I guess he would might need to create another account and a different email address, and we take it. Because in general, it's just one attempt. It used to be three attempts before, but you did not get two attempts on, this, on one question before. So, and uh, the the passing score is 60%. It's not 80% that you need to get in a, to pass a graduate level course, right? It's 60% just for that, that class, right? So don't worry, let's be optimistic. How valid it is? Oh, well, this is an excellent question, Sion. Well, this is an excellent question. Each software has its own uh, pros and cons, so to speak, and we would need to compare it on a data set basis. The question is how valid is the analytical result gotten from Watson Analytics compared to others like Tableau? Well, it's all on data set per data set basis. We need to say, analysis that work well on one data set may not work well on the other data set. And it also depends on the problems that we are working on. So, I mean, I think it's always a good idea to analyze the data in more than one program. But this is something that you may get to in a next level courses, in a 650, for instance. Uh, you may be analyzing data using a cloud application, and then you might be importing the data from the cloud application to Watson, something like that. So this is an excellent question. I like this question. And uh, yeah. What makes it better apart from not writing the code? This is an excellent question, too. What it makes it better from not writing the code? Well. Uh, in the organization, in, in the industry, you have different employees. You have some employees who have training in writing code, and you have some employees who don't have any experience in writing code, but they still want to gain some insight from the data. And they can do it just by clicking the buttons, buttons right? So they don't need to worry about debugging the code errors. They can still get insight. They can still get the information they need. Right? It might not be exactly all they need, but they can have a starting point. They can have a they can get started with analysis, so to speak, right? Not all employees in your company are developers, right? Uh sometimes you may want to look at something uh just to get a general idea about your data without writing the code. But if you want if you need to write the code, you're gonna get to it in the next levels where well, you're going to start learning the Python and R. But this is the first step. The first step is to just start getting the general idea about the data. Yeah. But yes, I agree that in data analytics, you do need to, it's, it's always helpful to know how to write code, but you're going to get to it in the next course. So we'll get to it. I hope I answered the question. Let me see what other questions we may have. Oh, okay. I'm glad that I answered the question. Yeah. So let's see what other questions we have. I really like questions, and now is a good time to ask them. Uh, can it be able to download the... Oh, the results from the display. Excellent. This is an excellent question. Yes. If I go back... Share my screen, if I go back to the display window, if I go back in here, and if I open up this display, right, and let me click on the demo dashboard, take a look at the scissors, this is here, right, I can download my visualizations. If, if, if by share, if you mean download your visualizations here, I would have to click here. I would need to click here, and I have options to email and download. And I can select exactly what I want to download. Uh, you also can share this 
dashboard with your teammates. But before I could do this, I would have to close it, right? I would have to make sure the file is closed, and then I could share, right? Uh -oh. Okay, I see what the problem is. The problem is that I probably have it open in more than one window. That's okay. Because, see, I have it open twice. That's a problem. So let me close this, and let me don't save it. Let me don't save it. Okay? So this is very important, something else, to make sure uh, I should not be doing what I was doing, right? I should not be logged in in two browsers. So anyway, let me stop sharing. Oops. And I hope I answered this question. All right. But yes, you can download the results from display top. Yes, exactly. Uh, let me see what else we have. Well, I understand that you guys are going to have more questions as you start uh, reading about it, as you start doing the readings. Yeah. Oh, you're the most welcome. You're the most welcome. So, Steve, is there anything that you think that I may have missed? Anything important? No, very thorough, as usual. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I hope it helps. I hope, yeah. So, I guess if you don't have any questions... We're going to call it a night. Thank you all. I guess we may stop the recording right now.